Hi, how are you? I'm uh, Chief Dean Rondo, and uh, welcome back to Coffee and Connections with the Chief. And uh, to my left, as always, is uh, Captain Mark Livy, my executive officer. And to my right is uh, uh, one of our newest officers, Officer Christine Martineau. Um, on a bit of a somber note, I, I want to start off this program and talk a little bit about the double homicide we had uh, recently here in Wolfboro uh, a few months ago in October. And in fact, uh, Officer Martineau was the primary investigating officer in that case and did a phenomenal job uh, in that uh, investigation. And it was uh, through her good efforts that we were able to uh, identify a lead suspect and get all the proper police resources assembled in a relatively timely fashion to secure the uh, public safety, secure the crime scene, uh, secure the neighborhood. Um, so look, um, these things happen from time to time and it's truly a tragedy and it's unfortunate. However, I want to uh, put some uh, fears to rest right away. The state of New Hampshire is a very safe state to live in and indeed uh, the town of Wolfboro is a very safe town to uh, live in, to work in, and to raise a family. <clears throat> Nothing has changed. This was unfortunately an isolated incident. It was a very specific incident, meaning that there was a connection between the assailant and the victims. We understand what that is. We know what that is. Uh, the, this was never an active shooter which uh, some information had gotten out on Facebook to suggest that and I think concerned the public tremendously. This was not an active shooter situation. And I have a responsibility to protect the public and indeed to protect the integrity of the investigation. And though there may be some criticisms that were directed at the police department in it for not releasing certain information or releasing information fast enough, please understand that the, the community was always very safe. If the community wasn't safe, I would make sure the community was safe. And I would have brought in additional police resources. I would have brought in additional personnel. Uh, we would have taken steps to ensure that everybody was safe uh, before we did anything else. We understood the situation we had in front of us very clearly, and we knew what we had to do. We, we also knew, based off of our investigation and based off the investigative efforts of the team that was assembled under Officer Martineau, we knew what we were dealing with. and. We knew where the individuals were that we needed to speak, speak with and speak to. That being said, that is an information that I could have released to the public at that moment. I want you to understand that at no time was the public in jeopardy. Again, this was an isolated incident. It was specific. Uh, there, were, there, was a, there was purpose and intent behind the uh, assailant's actions. And we understand what those were. This was not an active shooter situation. Uh, this was not the Wolf Road Police Department trying to keep any information secret for no other reason than to keep the information secret. This was the Wolf Road Police Department keeping the information quiet until we had such time to develop a plan of action and to investigate to ensure that we apprehended the suspect and uh, developed a case that would end in a successful prosecution. This is not NCIS. This is not crime scene uh, investigations. This is not anything that you're going to see on ABC or NBC or, or, or one of the other uh, uh, media outlets. This, this is real life. These things aren't solved in 54 minutes, uh, including commercial breaks, okay? It doesn't happen that way. Certain steps have to be followed. Protocols have to be have to be followed for a successful prosecution. This is just the way it is. So where there has been some criticism directed at the Wolf Road Police Department, that's fine. Uh, citizens are certainly entitled to uh, express their displeasure. However, I want you to understand what the what, where the other side of the coin is. I have been in police administration now for the better part of 14 years, uh, between my time as the executive officer and now as the chief of police. I can certainly tell you that the uh, criticism I get 
uh, is not the lack of information forthcoming, but is releasing too much information. And uh, that is just simply the case. The Wolfboro Police Department has always erred on the side of releasing too much information as not enough information. I believe in the First Amendment. I believe in the uh, writ of habeas corpus. I believe those two are connected, and I believe it's important to let our media folks know exactly what is going on. They have a piece to play in this, they have a part to play in this, and I want to make sure they keep our citizenry informed and involved. And if there's any questions or concerns, uh, I want the citizens to reach out and talk to me. Don't believe everything that you see on Facebook. Uh, it's simply not true. Uh, people speculate. They don't know what the facts and circumstances are. Please understand that there is a reason for everything that I do. Uh, there, is, there is a plan, and there is, a, if you will, a method to the madness. So sometimes you just have to trust in governance that we know what we're doing. In this particular case, uh, unfortunately, the assailant decided to, to take his own life. I can only speculate that the reason he did so was because he knew we were closing in and we were getting ready to make an arrest. And that arrest was based off of things like direct evidence and forensic science and witness interviews and locking certain subjects, certain interviewed subjects into their stories. So with that said, I, I just will leave you that this whole thing was a tragedy. It was it's deeply, uh, deeply unfortunate, and, and our, our sympathy goes out to all those who were affected. But please understand that I will always make sure that the town of Wolfboro is safe. And if it isn't safe, if I don't have the resources at my disposal to make it safe, I will bring those in from other locations, and then we, we will make it safe. So I just want the citizens to understand that. I also want them to understand that there is a process that has to be followed to make sure that we, we secure a successful prosecution. Thank you very much. And having said that now, we'll begin with the normal portion of our program. So it's December. Merry Christmas. And uh, welcome back to another segment of Coffee and Connections with the Chief. And uh, as we move forward uh, into uh, this holiday season, we're, we're also closing the page uh, on our fiscal year 18 budget and developing a new budget, getting ready to execute that new budget, which will begin essentially on 1 January. And that being said, what I want to do is encourage uh, all of our residents and voters uh, to come out to uh, the town meeting to listen to the presentations that are put forth and to support the police department budget. Uh, this year, uh, among other things, I'm, I'm asking for the addition of uh, one new police officer that will help me better patrol and secure the town of Wolfboro. This is uh, 2018, and we're soon uh, we're going to be going into 2019. The dynamic in terms of public safety has changed from even just 10 years ago, and. Um, Though uh, we live in a bucolic area and, and we have, uh, relatively speaking, we, we, we have a, a wonderful place uh, to live, bad things still do happen. Uh, I just recently got through talking about a uh, double homicide that we had here uh, in the town of Wolfboro. We, we also had uh, recently a shooting uh, incident that occurred on off of uh, Route 16, or correction, off, off of Route 11 in uh, Rochester at the, at the uh, Walmart. So these things do happen, and we, we have to take measures and precautions. Uh, 2018 follows a year, follows uh, 2017, where police have become targeted. They've become targeted in their own homes. They've become targeted out on the street. Recently, we had a case at the Wolf Pro Police Department where an officer's vehicle was vandalized, and police uh, vehicles were targeted uh, for burglary and for theft. And this occurred at the Wolf Road Police Department. So, so these things are happening. We're not immune to this, even though we are in a bucolic area. So I want you to support my budget. We're taking steps and measures to make sure that we have the proper resources in place to deal with crime when it occurs. Um, that being said, I now want to turn it over to uh, my executive officer for a brief operational uh, update. Captain? Thanks, Chief. So some of the things that go on with his budget. Um, 
what I mentioned last month is that I was going to give you some stats around um, December area and, um, regarding the police department's incidents. Uh, and what I did is actually print out from the last five years um, an indication why we need this other officer is that in 2014, and when I say incidents, those are cases the officers are actually investigating. They actually make a report. They actually investigate. They do follow-ups. Um, so in 2014, we had 373 incidents. Um, 2015, we had 397. In 2016, we had 420. As you see, this incline keeps going up. In 2017, we had 517. And, and as a 2018, we're on pace again for um, 513. But so that's that's up to date to um, November 14th, as I printed that out. So there's still another month and a half. Granted, this is showing in December as you everyone sees and views this. But um, I just wanted to show you that because the incidents are increasing. They're on an incline. Um, there's more cases out there. There's more arrests coming from the, all those. Um, but we can't be out there all the time because we're getting tied up with all these cases. And this is another reason why we're going for that um, 14th officer as we move on to the fiscal year 19. Um, dispatch is doing a very similar thing. Uh, 2016, they have had 38,000 um, calls plus. 2017, same thing, 40,000 calls. In 2018, 38,000. So we're still on pace of the same thing in dispatch. Um, that's in a very important area of our um, operation. Um, they take, they're the hub of the town. Um, you got to realize that. They just don't do police, fire. They do the electric department. Um, they do the town garage. Uh, yeah, water sewer. They're the after hours for the electric department. So the, there's, there's many other features, I mean, important um, jobs, duties, tasks that they actually do that uh, the normal person doesn't realize other than outside of fire and police. Um, that they do and go for that. But so outside of that, um, the highway safety grants, um, they're back. They've been approved uh, since last time. So we got that um, all approved for fiscal year 2019. Um, in December, you'll be seeing an uh, increase of patrols, mainly for DWI coming in the uh, uh, Christmas month. Um, you got New Year's, Christmas. Um, uh, so everyone out there, be safe, have a driver. Um, plan ahead. Um, don't get out there and all of a sudden you're, you're in a bind and you don't know what to do. Don't, don't make that uh, call to, so you have to um, operate a vehicle um, when you've had alcohol. Call somebody. Um, exactly what I said is plan ahead. Please plan ahead. Um, tragedies are, um, can occur and we don't want to see that this year. Um, we want to get through the um, holiday season, um, to have fun, enjoy yourself, and the biggest thing is plan ahead. So as I move from there, we'll move over to um, Christina. Um, she's one of our newest officers, and she'll talk about it. Hello, my name is Christina Martineau. I'm the newest full-time hire here at Wolfboro Police Department. I've been here roughly a year, part-time, but about two months now I'm officially full-time. Very excited and couldn't be happier. So. Um, uh, previously, I had worked for the Madison Police Department for about almost a year, um, and then before that I was out in um, Pittsfield, New Hampshire for th about three, three and a half years, um, which is where I started my police um, work. Before that, um, I have six years total in law enforcement, so I'm just breaking it down for you. Um, six years ago, I actually started at the jail, um, Carroll County, uh, and started as a correctional officer. Um, when I graduated college. Um, I went to school for four years. Uh, I got a bachelor's degree in criminal justice, um, which is when I decided I need a job. So I came up here. Um, I, love, I love New Hampshire. I love the White Mountains, love up north. So this is where my heart is. I'm originally from Milford, New Hampshire. It's where I went to high school. I graduated in 09. Um, so yeah, so I started in corrections and then ventured over to law enforcement out and out on the road and in the community, um, which I love and I'll, I'll never leave probably. <laughs> so um, yeah, other than that, um, I've been six years total, so I've seen a lot so far and as every year goes by, I 
I think I've seen it all, and then there's always something. There's always something changing, always something new, um, always something to learn. Um, when I was in Pittsfield for three, three and a half years, um, I was promoted to detective over there, so I was involved in a lot of investigations, um, a lot of different cases over there. Um, and yeah, so here I am in Wolfboro now, and um, that's pretty much it. I don't know what else you want me to know. Sounds good. And I just want to mention that uh, th this young lady, uh, this young police officer, uh, was the primary investigating officer in the uh, in the double homicide, and you did a fantastic job, and, and I really appreciate that. That was a difficult scene to uh, look at and to investigate. And uh, this is uh, this is what we, we, we do, unfortunately, and uh, we see some bad things out there. And uh, it is hard. It is difficult. And uh, my hat goes off to you for, for a phenomenal job on that investigation. Um, so having said that, I want to uh, thank all of our uh, viewers and our listeners uh, for, for tuning in to uh, Coffee and Connections with the Chief. And uh, please continue to, uh, to watch Coffee and Connections with the Chief. There's a lot of great information that comes out. And uh, one thing I just want to emphasize that the, the captain said when he, when he ran these reports and he ran the incident reports, the, those numbers that he was talking about, those are, are essentially cases. Uh, but I want you to also understand that those are not offenses, right? Each one of those cases that he mentioned has multiple offenses attached to it. So, so a case is just that. It's a case, but there might be three, four, or five crimes that occurred within that case, and each one of those has to be investigated, right? We have to... We have to investigate that because that's that's what we do, right? That's the social contract, right? If you remember your political science, right? This is Rousseau and Hobbes on the social contract, and and this is the first job of any government is protection of its citizens. Uh, so that's number one. Number two is when it, when the captain talked about the dispatch calls, and he was talking about those forty thousand or fifty thousand calls. Those are calls for service. Right? Those are just not simply phone calls that come in to the Wolfboro Central Dispatch that say, hey, what time is 4th of July? You know, you know, and I, I kind of, you know, a little tongue in cheek on, on that one. Uh, you know, what time is Halloween, right? Those are not those, that's not what we're talking about. These, these are your citizens, right, that are calling because they need police or fire or EMS assistance or they're reporting that their electric is out or that there's a water main break or something else that requires an emergency response. That's what, what those numbers really are. So I want you to think about that. You know, we're talking in 2017, there were 40,981 calls for service, right? And, and uh, in 2018, with still essentially six weeks left, because we, we, you know, these are, this is all a database, right? These numbers are coming from a database and we're running about six weeks behind, okay? So we're, we're certainly on pace to break that number in 2018, and this is the important thing to keep in mind. So when we talk about 40,000 or 50,000 calls, we're talking calls for services, very, very important, is getting busier. The, 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 the public safety policing dynamic is changing. It's not changing for the worse. It's not changing for the better. It's just changing, right? Just like the way we policed in 1950 is very different from the way we policed in 1960 is very different from the way we policed in 1970, right? Things change, right? We, we understand more. Uh, or we change uh, protocols and best practices based off of lessons learned. And that's why we're asking for another police officer. And that's why the captain goes into the brief descriptions about the operational grants and statistics, okay? So this is very, very important stuff. And, and I want you to help me help you. And that's really what it all boils down to. We think there is a definite need for a 14th officer and, and perhaps even a 15th. And uh, time will tell on that, but what we're moving forward and what I think is the best course of action, I, I'm asking for your support. So, so please support the uh, police department budget. Let your elected officials know that uh, you want this. This will, will help us better secure and police the town, provide property uh, protection for our, our citizens and guests, and provide public safety for, for everybody here within the geographical limits of uh, the town of Wolfboro. Thank you very much, and please stay tuned for your safety tip of the month. And again, this is Dean Rondeau for the Wolfboro Police Department, and I want you to have a very Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year, and I will see you next year. 
Hi, uh, welcome back to uh, Coffee and Connections with the Chief. I'm Chief uh, Dean Rondeau with the Warpole Police Department. I have two citizens here, Dee and Gloria, that uh, want to ask a few questions about the police department. And uh, so uh, let's see what's on their mind. Dee? Okay. Well, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank you all and thank for doing what you do for oh, us. Fantastic. We're, we're so grateful for that. And um, I'd like to just find out a little bit about your background. Sure. Okay. Sure. So, um, I, I grew up in Cambridge, Massachusetts, um, and uh, that's where I, I went to uh, uh, high school. I went to a, uh, a private Catholic high school out in uh, Massachusetts, and then uh, for, and I did that for three years, and then I graduated from the city high school, Cambridge, Orange, and Latin, my senior year, and uh, I did, then I joined the Army. Uh, I was in the Army for a long time. Uh, I <clears throat> when, when I joined the Army, I was a young man right out of high school, and uh, I... Uh, uh, signed up to be a uh, recon scout, so I was assigned to a uh, 5th U.S. Cavalry, uh, and that was at Fort Devens at the time, Fort Devens, Massachusetts. So I, I was kind of lucky uh, in in how that worked out. Now, later, I, I went to uh, Norwich University, uh, which is a military academy, and uh, I was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the infantry. Uh, and then I went on active duty for a long time. I do have uh, a college degree, I have a B.A. Bachelor of Arts degree with concentrations in history and political science, and um, and then while I was in the Army, I, I started graduate study uh, from Central, in, uh, at Central Michigan University in public administration with a concentration in calculus. So um, that, uh, I, I did that for you know, the, the, uh, the active duty Army thing as an Army officer for about 11 years. And then I, I uh, got off of active duty. I stayed in the Army Reserve, and, and I went to the police academy, the, the uh, state police academy down in, in Concord. And I graduated from it. In, uh, in no Concord, uh, New Hampshire, oh, okay. and then I graduated uh, from there in uh, 1996. That was uh, November 96, um, and then I, I uh, was here. I've been here the entire time in, in the Wolf Road Police Department. Uh, while in the Army Reserve, I continued to stay in and get promoted. The Army sent me to school for uh, language training in Alba uh, Albania, and I already spoke French and Spanish uh, by that point in time. And um, I ended up uh, deploying to uh, Kosovo during that war uh, as an uh, Army officer. I was assigned to 10th Mountain Division. And uh, I led a team uh, in the, uh, actually it was a uh, team supporting our NATO allies during the war, uh, Greek Army and, and Polish Mountain Infantry. Uh, so I did that for about a year and then I came back to the, uh, to the town, was promoted uh, to sergeant. I uh, was, was made operations sergeant uh, at the Wolf Road Police Department, and that, uh, that was good for about nine and a half weeks, and then, I, uh, then the war in Iraq happened, and I, I found myself back on active duty with the, with the 82nd Airborne, and I was assigned to a rifle, airborne rifle battalion, uh, again, as a major, and uh, leading a team, and I was part of the original invasion force that went into Iraq, and I was there for approximately 14 months. And uh, there I earned, two, I earned two bronze stars while I was over there in Iraq and a number of, of luster awards. Um, I came back. I stayed in the Army Reserve. Um, this time I got promoted. When I came back, I got promoted for, uh, from sergeant to uh, lieutenant uh, and was made the executive officer in the, in the Warpro Police Department, so essentially the second in command. Uh, in the reserves, I was promoted to lieutenant colonel. Uh, became chief of operations and intelligence for a brigade. Would later go back to Iraq on a second tour. Uh, supporting 18th Airborne Corps, and I was uh, or, I was in Iraq uh, for about another um, you know 17 months or so. No, I'm retired. <clears throat> yeah, I retired out as a as a full colonel. I was chief of operations for the 353 KCOM in Staten Island, New York, and I retired after 34 years. Uh, 17 17 and it, what it, what it uh, ended up being is 17 and a half years on active duty, and 16 and a half years in the Army Reserve. So uh, I, had a, I had a very uh, good career. Uh, during that point in time, I did go to the FBI Academy. I am a graduate of the FBI Academy. I do have a graduate certificate in criminal justice education from the University of Virginia. Do you have a family? I do have a family. Do they see you? They do. They do, in fact. <laughs> And, and in fact, well, you know, look at, look at it this way, right? The whole army thing got me out of the house, right? It, Got me out of the house. It got me out of the wife's hair. You know, gave me a hobby. Gave me something to do. She liked that. She did. I think if she were here, she she be she be she be telling she be telling you she's praying for war. So I get back. I do. I have two boys. 
Yeah, and my oldest son is, in fact, he's a ca- uh, he's a captain now. He's getting ready to make major. He's on active duty. He, he too, is an Orch graduate. My wife is an Orch graduate as well, so we all went to Norwich. And my, my youngest son used to work for the town of Wolf Road, now works for Eastern Propane. He's a graduate of, of uh, Plymouth State University, and he, he too, has a degree in uh, criminal justice, and he has a minor in weather studies. So uh, uh, he, he wasn't sure if he wanted to be a police officer or a weatherman. <laughs> so, so that's a little bit about my background, uh, you know, um, you know, so I think I'm, I'm uh, you know, obviously I think I'm well qualified to be the, the chief of police. I have uh, definitely a vision where I want to take the police department. I, I, I definitely want to take the police department to the next level. Um, I, so um, what I would like to do is is get the uh, get the police department essentially focused on 21st century policing models uh, in accordance with the the accepted police science. Um, I think that's very very important. So the the policing dynamic in the country has changed uh, from even the 1990s. The way we investigate crimes, the way that we conduct uh, police operations or policing operations. Um, the concerns that the public has have all changed, and, and I think the, the Wolf Road Police Department needs to change with that. In other words, we need to keep up with the times. So, for example, technology um, is a great tool that can be used to our advantage, um, and I want to make sure we do that. Uh, interoperability with our, with our uh, other municipal, state, county, and federal partners is really very important. Uh, so these are the things that I think we really need to, to come to terms with and we need to grasp. The question was, uh, was, was, was the Wolfboro Police Department involved in a recent drug sweep that uh, netted 15 uh, perpetrators? And, and the answer is yes, we were. We were intimately involved in that. And that is exactly uh, what I'm talking about when... when we look at how, you know, so for example, specifically, how Wolfboro used to conduct itself in terms of policing operations when I started was that we were going to be reactive and not proactive. That we were going to wait for a crime to occur and then take action. We were going to deal ourselves uh, or concern ourselves only with those things that happen within the geographical boundaries of Wolfboro. And we say, okay, well, some of that kind of makes sense. I could see that. The problem is that when we talk about things like fraud, right, scams, uh, things that prey upon our, our aging population, right, those who are most vulnerable, or drugs, they don't, they don't wholly stay within the geographical boundaries of Wolfboro. I cannot begin to tell you, ladies, how many times I get a call from uh, a... a um, an individual uh, who may have been scammed or attempted scam. And, and those cases are very important to those people. And because they're important to those people, they're important to me. But oftentimes, they're, they're occurring in jurisdictions outside of Wolfboro. They may be coming from uh, New York City. They may be coming from Pennsylvania. They may be coming from uh, a country outside the, the, the territorial limits of the United States. Well, that doesn't mean that we can investigate it. But what it means is that that we have to involve ourselves with other agencies that have the jurisdiction, whether it's Homeland Security, whether it's NYPD, or, or, or whether it's the Pennsylvania State Police. But the, the bottom line is we, we need to be able to work and cooperate and operate with those other jurisdictions. That's really, really important. Uh, because the only way we're going to get a handle on these types of cases is if we we prosecute those that are perpetrating the crimes against our citizens. So just because you're a citizen in Wolfboro uh, and you're taken advantage of doesn't mean that I won't go to the ends of the earth to find that perpetrator. And that's what's changed. You know, 20 years ago, somebody would have said, you know, the leadership in the Wolfboro Police Department would have said, well, that's out of our jurisdiction. There's nothing we can do. I'm sorry. Well, I'm, I'm not, I don't buy that. I, I, th I think it's important for us to do everything we can to follow up. Now, ultimately, the end result may be the same, that there's nothing we can do, but we're going to try. And every once in a while, we get lucky, and we make an arrest. And uh, Sergeant uh, Guy Maloney made an arrest, had an arrest made on some subjects out of Jamaica, 
that we're taking advantage of some of our elderly population here. Um, I've had uh, good luck with working with the FBI, and we got some, some folks in Mexico that were taking advantage of some of our, our uh, uh, citizens here in Wolfboro. So we, we do get lucky every, every now and again. But the important thing is that we try. And we send a message. And the message is, look, if you violate a law in Wolfboro, I'm going to come I'm going to come get you. I'm going to come get you. I'm going to come arrest you. And that is exactly uh, the point I'm trying to, to, to get at with the drug problem. Drugs know no bounds. Drugs are sold all over the state. They come in and out of Wolfboro all the time. And when that happens and I learn about it, uh, the message is I'm going to come get you. If you break a law in Wolfboro, if you're dealing drugs in Wolfboro, if you're moving drugs through Wolfboro, and I find out you're doing that, I'm going to go get you. And I don't care if you're in Ossipi, I don't care if you're in Conway, I don't care if you're in Massachusetts, Lawrence or Lowell, or Florida or California, I'm going to come get you. And we're going to use all of our state and federal resources to do that. And so, yes, we were, out, we were intimately involved in that operation. The, so the question was, what about the murders that haven't been solved? So when you say the murders, you're, you're speaking of the Stacey Burns murder and the, and, the Bobby, and the Bobby Miller. So the Bobby Miller one is, if, you know, unfortunately, she was not a Wolfboro resident, right? That occurred at the time of, of, of her death, unfortunately. She was living in, in uh, I believe it was uh, Guilford or Gilmington. So that, that is in their jurisdiction. However, the one thing I want to say is that when a murder occurs within the state of New Hampshire, um, the, the local jurisdiction uh, unfortunately has to take a back seat. We, follow, we fall to uh, a supporting role, and the Attorney General's office is in charge of that investigation. Now, they use the major crimes unit of the state police, but even the state police are not in charge of that investigation. It's the Attorney General's office. The Attorney General's office, uh, by, and this is, the, this, is, this is true of every state in the union, the Attorney General of that particular state is the lead law enforcement officer for the state. So he or she, whoever it may be, is the lead law enforcement officer, and they, they, they call the shots. So when you talk about unsolved murders, um, it, it really falls, those cases are the purview of the Attorney General's office. So now specifically, what were your, what were your questions relative to that? Well, no, we've, it's just been such a long time. We're just wondering, you know, we never hear anything about what's going on with yeah. that murder. And it's, you know, it's very part of our lives here in Wolfboro. Sure, I, I can understand that, and, and I, I, can, I can assure you that the case is, is still active. Right? The Attorney General has not forgotten about it. I know that for a fact. Um, but he is in charge of the investigation, and not I. And because he's in charge of the investigation, I'm not at, at liberty to discuss. Uh, I, I can't release information on a case that I, I don't know the ins and outs of. I don't know the... Uh, the particular status at this moment, other than that it's under investigation. Um, and, and I know that may not necessarily make you feel any better, but what should make you feel better is that it is being uh, actively investigated. This isn't a case that has been forgotten about. And um, please remember that there is no statute of limitations on murder, right? And sometimes the best thing, uh, the best strategy uh, is for a, a case to sit. Um, things change over time. And sometimes new evidence does come in. And, and that new evidence that may come in may be enough to break the case. I also want you to remember that the, the Attorney General's office, right, they're, they're attorneys. And, and they're concerned about following the proper protocol to ensure a successful conclusion at time of trial. Because remember, we're only going to get one shot at this, right? There's only going to be one shot at this solving this case. We've got to make sure that if we do take it to trial, that, that everything is done correctly and best practices and protocols were followed. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess that's understood. I don't have any other questions. Well, thank you, ladies, very much for your time. I really appreciate it.
Hi, how you doing? I'm uh, Chief Dean Rondo. Welcome back to uh, Coffee and Connections with the Chief, and I'm here with your safety tip of the month. So this is, uh, you know, the holiday season, and I actually have a couple uh, of tips this month, and, and the first one is going to follow on generally uh, for what I, I always start with the uh, fall and the winter is, look, uh, this is the Northeast. It's the winter time. Winter has arrived. Uh, we get sloppy weather. Right, and uh, the nor'easters come in about once every other weekend. Generally speaking, that's what you can plan on. All right, you can you can pretty much set your clock by it. Keep your eye on the weather. Right, the, the weather changes, the temperature drops, the snows come in, the ice storms come in. It's sloppy out there. Just be careful. If you don't have to go out on these nor'easters, don't stay off the road. And give the, the uh, snowplow drivers, the, the snowplow truck drivers, give them ample space and opportunity to get the roads clear. So that's your first safety tip, right? Stay home, stay alert, stay alive. The second one I want to mention uh, is something that's a little near and dear to my heart. Uh, the holiday season. And no, I'm not talking about premature holiday decoration. Uh, what I am talking about is the the propensity for people to attend holiday parties and seasonal gatherings, whether they're Christmas or Hanukkah uh, or, or whatever cultural uh, holiday party you're going to attend, uh, and then uh, your, your first night or last night activities, wherever they may be. Uh, <clears throat> be careful. Uh, drinking and driving is a very serious offense. And if you get caught, the, the, the penalties are huge. The penalties are just absolutely staggering. So if you're going to go out and you know you're going to consume alcohol, or you're going to be tempted by alcohol consumption, have a designated driver. There's nothing wrong with that. Have a designated driver. And if you've had too much to drink, all you need to do is call for a ride, and somebody will, will come and, and take you home. It, it, it's, there's, no, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, call for a ride. Somebody will come get you, but please don't don't drink and drive. Uh, it's just simply too dangerous. Wolfboro has a lot of holiday uh, uh, f uh, festivals and uh, uh, parties and celebrations. One of those is the last night, first night uh, celebration, which uh, always takes place on on 31 December. And uh, this is our opportunity to welcome in the new year and say say goodbye to the old year. Uh, the downtown area will be full of uh, visitors, residents, and guests going about the uh, area's various venues, restaurants, celebrations, concerts, activities. So I, I need you folks to be very mindful of that, be very careful of that, and dress for the weather. If it's going to be cold, if it's going to be rainy, if it's going to be icy, you need to prepare for that. The last thing you want to do is be caught uh, in the environment unprepared. Uh, and not trust for the for the weather conditions. So again, thank you very much for tuning in to uh, Coffee and Connections with the Chief. I'm Chief Dean Rondo for the Wolfboro Police Department, and I want you all to have a very happy uh, and safe holiday season. Thank you very much, and I will see you next year. Bye bye.